am going to record this video while working on some sewing. Um, and you can't see what I'm working on because it's going to be featured in its own video. Um, but I am going to talk about when it is and is not appropriate to wear historical clothing. Um, so I dress in late 19th century styles pretty much every day, six, six or seven days a week usually. Um, and I encourage everybody who wants to dress in historical styles to do so. Um, I was going to try to think of something else sort of inspiring to say, but I mean, just, just kind of do what you want. I, I encourage you to do so. But there are times when it's probably better not to do so. Um, and those are, that's kind of what I'm going to go over. So the first uh, instance I'd like to mention is weddings. Uh, it's probably not the best idea to wear something that is super historical and cool and fun to a wedding because the whole point of weddings is for the attention to be on the bride and groom. Um, and if you wear something that's really historical and amazing, people are going to be paying attention to you instead of to the bride and groom. So just out of respect to them, it's probably not the best idea to wear historical clothing to weddings. Um, the same goes for funerals. You don't want to be grabbing everybody's attention at a funeral. The attention should be on the family of the deceased um, and on being, you know, circumspect and, and, and sad and not on somebody who's dressed outrageously. Um, so those are two big circumstances. And of course, you know, if it's a, if it's a themed wedding in which everybody's dressing up or if the um, bride and groom have uh, requested that you wear, requested that you dress in historical clothing, then that's fine, um, obviously. Um, and similarly, if it's with the, with the funeral, if it was somebody who maybe you knew through doing some sort of costuming events or something, then it might be a nice gesture to wear historical clothing to the funeral. Um, but generally, and you don't necessarily have to not wear historical clothing, but maybe asking, writing to the bride and groom or to the family, actually just, just, to, the, just to the funeral, just don't. Generally, you don't want to burden the family with this. Um, but if you, if you know the bride and groom well, then you could write to them and um, offer to wear something more pedestrian. Um, if you don't know them well, then just wear something more pedestrian, I would say. Um, and the same thing goes when you're meeting somebody for the first time, or maybe if it's, maybe it's not the first time, but you still don't know each other very well and you're going into a public space. I think that it's a good idea to either just wear something more pedestrian or to, again, write to them and say, you know, the, the way I dress oftentimes brings attention. And if, um, you know, sometimes people are not comfortable with that. And if you would feel more comfortable, I would be happy to dress down and wear something a little bit more, um, a little bit more of this century and less attention grabbing. And just, just offering to do that for them if they feel uncomfortable. If there are a few think that they might feel uncomfortable or even if you think that they won't feel uncomfortable, just offering to do that is a really nice gesture. They're probably not going to take you up on it. They're probably going to say, oh no, it's fine. You can dress however you want, but just offering is um, I'm going to have to close that door. Offering to do so is... Yeah, I'm going to close the door. Offering to do so is a really good gesture, and it'll show them that you, um, that you care about them, and that you, you know, don't want them to be made uncomfortable. So generally, the, the rule is if Either the attention is supposed to be on somebody else, or if you're with somebody who maybe doesn't like attention, or if you just don't know them very well, then wear something more pedestrian. That's the other thing, is if, if you're with somebody and you do know them very well, and you know that they don't like to have attention drawn to them, then it's a good idea to look more pedestrian when you're with them, because it's not, it's, it's disrespectful to, to, 
put other people through that if that's not something that they're comfortable with. Um, so generally, generally the rule is um, if the attention should be on somebody else or if you're with somebody who isn't comfortable with attention or if you're with a new person, then um, if you then then generally steer towards wearing something more pedestrian. Um, and if you, or if you know them well enough, then you can kind of ask them and offer to wear something more, more pedestrian. So this is kind of a, a, a general guide that I use um, for when I'm, you know, when I'm trying to decide, is it, is it really appropriate to wear 1890s clothing uh, right now? Um, this is sort of what my, my, what my thought process is. Um, so then we know kind of vaguely when it is and isn't appropriate to wear historical clothing. Now let's talk about what to expect when you do wear it. Um, and this part is going to be aimed specifically at women since I don't know what happens to men when they wear historical clothing. Um, you will get a lot of attention. I know I sort of mentioned that already, but people will, uh, come up to you. I imagine it's sort of what it's like to be a celebrity, almost. Um, <laughs> I feel kind of weird saying that, but I, I think that it is kind of like people will kind of come up to you and, uh, you know, ask you to take your picture and kind of just, you know, sometimes it, 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 it's, it's strange. And it, at the beginning, it does feel kind of intrusive and you can tell that people are staring at you and I have gotten used to that now so I don't really notice it anymore but in the beginning when I started dressing in this way it was it, it was very very weird um, because people do stare at you you can hear people kind of talking about you behind your back um, and it's it's weird when I say talking about you behind your back I don't necessarily mean your friends um, just kind of people in the supermarket or whatever will kind of talk about you. Um, people will also come up to you and, like I said, ask you for pictures. They'll also ask you if you're in a play or they'll ask you why you're dressed up and they'll be really surprised when you say, oh, I'm not in a play, this is just how I dress. Um, generally, people are really enthusiastic and supportive about it. Sometimes people will be kind of will be rude um, and say some mean things, but for the most part, people are really, really enthusiastic and supportive and they'll say, oh my gosh, that's so cool, that's so amazing, that's so wonderful. Um, on the most part, I, I, at least I tend to have really, really positive interactions with people um, over, over the way I dress. Um, people will automatically assume that you're in a play. That's another one. Um, and sometimes they will refuse to believe you when you tell them that you are not. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've kind of gotten in an argument with some, with a woman before, um, trying to convince her that I'm, I wasn't in a play. And she, she, she went away still think, uh, still believing that I was in a play. And I was just for some reason not telling her. Um, so that was <laughs> slightly irritating, but people will, will assume that you're in a play. Um, or that you're doing some sort of living history thing. Um, people will feel more at liberty to touch you, which is, that that's something that I don't like as much. And I'll, I'll admit that I have some double standards. Like if an old woman comes up and kind of like taps me on the on the hip or on the shoulder and some or something, and asks me something about my clothing, then, you know, it's a 90 year old woman. I'm, I'm pretty all right with that. If it's, a 30 year old man then I'm a lot more uncomfortable with that and um, that doesn't happen a whole lot but it does happen and people do feel more at liberty to, to touch you um, they also feel more at liberty to ask you about your underwear and again I have kind of a double standard with that I'm much more comfortable with women asking me if I'm wearing a corset than I am with men asking me if I'm wearing a corset um, which I know I, I know it's a double standard but I mean, it, I think it also kind of does make sense. Um, and it also kind of depends on the context. Like if it's a man that I know well and they ask me if I'm wearing a corset, then I don't mind if he's a friend. But if it's, there was one time I was taking a taxi and the driver 
began interrogating me about my corset <laughs> and asking me all these all of these pretty invasive <laughs> questions and then um, started telling me, oh, well, I hope that it's not like an, an Victorian corset because those ones are really bad for you. And I said, oh, actually, it is a Victorian corset. It's a, you know, a reproduction and it's um, not actually bad for you if you wear one that, you know, I, I did the whole thing. My elevator speech, that's another thing, is you're going to have to kind of develop an elevator speech that can be done with in at least two minutes, probably less, um, that kind of explains why you do what you do, um, and also explains that you're uh, not incredibly unhealthy. So I kind of gave him my elevator speech, and he did not believe me, and it was the very, very uncomfortable taxi ride. I mean, taxi rides are always uncomfortable anyway, but <laughs> being stuck in the in a um, taxi with this 30-year-old um, man who was interrogating me about my underwear was not a comfortable experience, and that does happen to you every once in a while. Um, but it's not frequent that that kind of thing happens. It does happen, but it's not frequent, and... Um, the positive experiences are much better. I, re I remember there, there have been two times when men who, have, maybe 80 year old men have come up to me and said, you, you look like my mother who's been dead for 50 years. And that was just, I mean, I had to, I had to go and kind of sit down after that, after those two um, instances, because it was, it was just a very it, it, it was it was an, it was an amazing thing to to hear that I had, I had you know I'd reminded this old man of his mother um, so the it, it, it's just the positive experiences outweigh the negative ones almost all, all and in my experience the positive experiences have outweigh the negative ones um, I haven't had anybody who's been too incredibly nasty to me. I, I know of some other people, Sarah Chrisman, if you know of her, she's had some I think, more negative experiences than I have. Um, but I, I don't know if I'm just incredibly lucky or if she's incredibly unlucky. Um, but yeah, as far as, as far as I can say, the positives outweigh the negatives. Um, people will call you Mary Poppins a lot. Uh, I don't know why, if you, whatever era you dress as if you're a woman, people will call you Mary Poppins. For some reason, she is the historical character. Um, I cannot count the number of times I have been called Mary Poppins. It's gotten so irritating that I uh, play dumb now. If somebody says, oh, Mary Poppins, I'll say, oh, actually, no, my name's Adelaide. Uh, I don't know any Marys. Could you describe her to me? And um, you know, pretend I don't know what I'm talking about. And that throws people through a loop. And also, I should I should clarify if a if a child, you know, if a five year old child comes up to me and thinks I'm Mary Poppins, then that's cute, and I think that's quite charming and sweet. If an adult is calling me Mary Poppins, I mean, it's it's it is very annoying, and I think it's also kind of rude um, to, uh, you know, compare somebody to a, a fictional character when you are old enough to know that fictional characters are fictional and old enough to know that that's rude. Um, so yes, if you're a woman and you wear any kind of historical garment, I mean, I wear, I dress, that's another thing, I dress 1890s and Mary Poppins takes place in a semi-historically inaccurate 1910. And, you know, those are, those are, those are not the two eras at all. I, have, I know somebody who dresses 1830s and she also gets called Mary Poppins. So any, pretty much any era you dress from, you're going to be called Mary Poppins. Maybe if you dress in, you know, 1770s court gowns, you'll get called Mary Antoinette, but you're going to be called Mary Poppins in my experience a lot. And that's just something you kind of have to get used to. But again, I hasten to add that the, um, the good sides outweigh the the instances of being called Mary Poppins. It's it's really amazing to have people, you know, come up to me and and say, I mean, like I, I mentioned the the men who who um, of whom I reminded of their mothers, and um, 
also people who just come up to me and, and will say, oh, just seeing you made my day and um, that kind of thing. And just you know, people people who are just delighted by, by the way I look and who seem to have had a better day because they've seen me is so, so gratifying. And I, I absolutely love that. That's really a wonderful thing that I, that I can do for people. Um, so that is also something that you can, you can look forward to by dressing in this way. Another thing is that it will become your personality. It'll become a dominant, you will be known as the Victorian girl or the whatever girl. Um, and that's, I mean, and I think Carolina Zabrowska mentioned this once, like if you have any kind of really stand out quality, that's kind of going to become your persona, but it's important not to let that become your only thing. Like people are going to identify you as primarily the Victorian girl, but, um, or the fifties girl or, or whatever. Um, but it's important not to let that happen, like for, for, for you not to identify yourself um, as that. I consider myself to be primarily an environmentalist, actually. Um, just I'm not an environmentalist with a, a good fashion sense. Um, I also consider myself to be a musician, not a professional one, obviously an amateur one, but I, I love playing music. I play the organ, uh, the harpsichord when I can find one, the piano. Generally, I play the piano when I can't get my hands on an organ, um, and the banjo. I don't play any of them particularly well, but I do play them. Um, so it's, it's important not to let the fact that everybody sees you as the insert era here person um, dictate how you see yourself. Um, I see myself as all of these other things, um, you know, an environ an environmentalist slash music player. I don't I don't like saying that I'm a consider myself to be a musician because I don't. I just can I just like playing music. But an environmentalist slash person who plays music, slash, etc., etc., who just happens to dress in Victorian-style clothing. Um, and it's important to keep that in mind, that you are still a complete person, no matter what you're wearing. Um, so I believe that sums up this video. It's saying that I've been recording for 20 minutes, but I had a lot of pauses in which I was trying to think of what to say next. Uh, so I think it'll end up being rather short after I've edited it down and uh, my mouth is very dry and I've drunk so much water today and I don't know why. Yeah, I'm going to close off the video by saying again, if you want to dress in historical styles, I, I encourage you. I can't imagine living my life any other way. I, I have tried to not dress like this and I was miserable. Um, so if you feel that it's something you need to do, definitely do it. Know that you're going to have to develop a thick skin and get used to people looking at you. But also know that there are going to be some amazing and gratifying moments that just give you, give you pause in life. Um, but also remember that there are times when it isn't appropriate and you'll have to do, um, I believe Morgan Donner Point of the term history modding or, or history history bounding. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to history bound, and I'll I'll do a history bounding video a little bit later. Um, so yes, <laughs> this garbled garbled video. Most of my videos are garbled because I never seem to uh, write notes beforehand. Other than that, um, other than my my women of history video. Um, so yes, I hope you enjoyed. Happy. 2020. Happy Roaring Twenties. Uh, yeah. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.